Hello everyone, welcome back to the Planet Inn. In this week's episode, we're going to be building some ruins. So I kind of really wanted to spend some time building some more generic terrain. And really that's kind of been uh, a theme on this channel, is to build something that you can use for multiple games. Those are the most versatile pieces of terrain. Um, and, uh, you know, you spend some time building these things, you want to be able to uh, use them in multiple games, right? So in this week, uh, we are going to do some ruins. Let's take a look at them. And they're very generic. So this is just like a stone wall with a window in it. Uh, this, you know, I plan on using it for Blood and Plunder, but you can use it for Blood and Valor, which is a World War One game. Uh, this can be used for, uh, like, Bolt Action, World War Two game, and maybe even uh, Blood and Steel, uh, that Torian-era game that uh, I was been talking about. Uh, so that's one of the pieces. And then we got another piece here. And so I've kind of made it so you could use these all together as one ruined, uh, like, house or, or building. You can kind of put them all together uh, on the, the corners of the building. Or it can be added to something else. And I also plan on, in the future, building some more specific parts to it. So this is very generic, right? But, uh, I mean, you can make ruins that are, you know, an Aztec temple. Well, that would only be in a certain part of the world, right? Where this could be in the Europe, European theater. It could be in, you know, North America. It could be all sorts of places, right? Uh, so, but building an accessory, like if I was making a Spanish missionary and making an entranceway, then I could make add it to these pieces and, and make it more specific for a certain time period or a game that I'm playing. So that's kind of what I wanted to do is make these little modular little pieces that we could build uh, ruins of. Uh, so, all right, so that's what we're going to be building. So before we get down to the table, just want to qu quickly do a brief update of the uh, global campaign uh, and where, where we sit, the English faction. So right now we're sitting in third place. Uh, so that's not great, but the good news is we've actually caught up on first place. Uh, so if that makes any sense, the top three countries are really uh, tight. So Spain, England, and the Pirate Faction are all pretty close at the top. So just keep playing those games. Uh, we're making some uh, real grounds and uh, get back to that uh, leading position again. I also want to talk about the Port of Plunder. So I kind of mentioned that in the last episode that that is a potential prize that we could win. And I was kind of coming up with an idea of how you could win that. So really what I'm thinking is, it's the English commander that has the most English spirit, per se. So uh, what I mean by that is, uh, they play the most, uh, you know, mostly just English games. So they can play any faction in this tournament. Uh, but we're going to be looking for somebody that plays mostly English. So it's not so much the amount of games you play, is uh, you know, the majority of the games being played as an English commander that you play during this uh, tournament. And the other thing is... Uh, just posting pictures of your matches, maybe there's a great victory you had, uh, and just make sure you tag me in them. So just put uh, uh, my name in there and uh, tag me in your picture so I can see them. Or you could just uh, post them on the uh, the Plunder Den Facebook page. Uh, if you need a link to it uh, in the YouTube uh, on here, just go to the top bar. You'll see there's a link to the Facebook uh, page. Just click that. Uh, and uh, we'll get you into the group, uh, and then you can post your uh, pictures there uh, so I can see them. So I'm just kind of uh, just showing that. I mean, you can put them on, on the other sites. It's, it's good to kind of spread them around, but make sure you, uh, you tag me in them so I, so I know uh, what you've posted uh, and so I can take a look at it. So we're going to do that kind of for the whole tournament, but I think I'm going to do it till the last uh, second last week, not the very last week. Uh, and then from there, I'll, I'll pick a winner, somebody that's been uh, posting lots of images, uh, somebody that's uh, been playing a lot of games as an English commander, uh, mostly. So, I mean, they don't have to necessarily, like I said, play a lot of games. They just have to play as uh, the English commander majority of their matches that they have played. Uh, a good percentage of them, anyways. I'm not stopping you from playing anybody else's. But uh, uh, for this specific prize, that's one of the things that you, one of the requirements. Uh, and then in that last week, I'm going to have one more challenge for you to, to complete it off. Uh, so that's kind of a build up to the uh, second last week. Uh, so let's just get the dates on there so you know which uh, date that is. That's uh, week 13. That's uh, the second last week, it looks like. Uh, and uh, that's August 22nd to the 28th. So during that time frame right there. Uh, that's when uh, we're going to have our last mission for it. Uh, and uh, But make sure you do all those things I mentioned uh, up to that point, right? Uh, and then just a quick reminder of next week uh, is employ the locals. So include a hostage or advisor in your force. 
So you have to add those into your force to get extra points. So remember, make sure, make sure we capitalize as many points as we possibly can. If we're not going to play a whole lot of games, let's just make sure we have uh, a lot of points in the games we do play. So that's pretty much it. I'll uh, move on to back to the to trade building episode here. Uh, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Planet Inn, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Planet Inn and get first-hand information when I uh, start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table. Let's start painting and let's start crafting. Okay, so I started this project by uh, really just kind of going through some of the scraps I had left over from previous projects. And I knew I kind of wanted to build some ruins. And I kind of looked at some of the uh, dollar store foam board I had and kind of made it into some shapes. Uh, this is really a rough stages here. Uh, looking at some leftover rocks. I got some uh, eggshell carton uh, stones and a whole bunch of like balsa wood, popsicle sticks just uh, assorted wood uh, and I figured uh, th this would be great to make some ruins out of. So then I decided I wanted to have some windows in uh, one of the walls uh, and uh, kind of fit it on one of these one of these larger pieces. Uh, I had to trim those down a bit obviously it's too big it's overhanging uh, but the idea was to make it kind of uh, two corners of a wall. Uh, one was, a, I would say, a little more interesting with the windows, and the other one's just a back corner. And then I wanted to kind of a long piece, a straight piece. Uh, ideally, I just wanted to have a, a sorted to ruins that I could attach to pretty much anything. So just showing you the tacky glue. That's how I glued it all together. Uh, once I fit it together, uh, that's how I uh, adhered it to, to the bottom base. So you can see that I... Well, Pulled the paper off one side, and that's the inside. I'm going to texturize that uh, with a tinfoil ball to make it uh, look like stucco. Uh, and uh, I'll just cut those uh, windows out with a exacto blade there, and I'm just showing you the tinfoil ball. Uh, just because that's the inside, the outside I plan on gluing bricks to, um, so, but I just wanted to have kind of a texture on the inside, uh, like they put a stucco on there. So then I added some balsa wood uh, that was left over in that plate uh, to kind of frame out my window. I kind of just used various different sizes, a flat wide for the, uh, you know, the ledge, and then kind of some smaller matchsticks in the middle. Uh, I just kind of framed out those windows. So then I framed out kind of the uh, floor, uh, kind of like a baseboard kind of thing. Uh, where I'm going to put the wooden planks, and I kind of did that on all the pieces. I uh, put a little balsa wood in the corners, like there was a, a support beam there of some sort. Um, and then I added uh, popsicle stick uh, planks to the bottom. So I did have to cut a few more uh, ones other than the ones I had in the plate because I didn't have enough. Um, but uh, I just uh, used the exacto blade to texturize it, as I always do. Uh, and then kind of just cut them to form. Some of them I just broke to make it look more rustic uh, than just uh, cutting them. Uh, but I plan on doing the base of all three of these pieces uh, with a little bit of uh, flooring. All right, so this is after I've done that. And I've glued everything in place. I started adding some boulders and stones, just kind of like rubble from uh, the building. You can see some of the pieces I didn't complete. Just wanted to be really torn up the floor. Uh, kind of match the rest of the building. So this is kind of after I've glued everything uh, pretty much together here. And I'm going to move on to adding bricks to the outside. So I just uh, had that pile of leftover bricks. And when I build lots of bricks, I never know how many I'm going to make. And I always have leftovers. Uh, and so it's perfect. I'm just going to glue these on here and use them up uh, to build another piece of terrain. And I'm just showing you, I'm planning on doing the outer walls of everything. So this building could look like it's all part of the same building, or it could be on its own, separate, just chunks. Alright, so this is after I've added a lot more stone rubble, and uh, I've also uh, completed the outer wall. So you can just, you know, just glued up various different size stones that I had uh, left over. It wasn't uh, really uh, wanted to be too uniform, just kind of like a rustic house that's been destroyed. Uh, and these are the eggshell cartoned uh, stones that I built for the roads. 
I had some left over, and I kind of wanted to have a kind of an outer road on the outside, uh, maybe a walkway of some sort, uh, just on the outside here. So that's pretty much done. I got everything that I needed to in place. I'm just going to show you all the different pieces and kind of how I glued everything on. It's a great use for all my scraps. Uh, I made some interesting uh, ruins. I do plan on expanding on this uh, and uh, kind of what I mentioned in the intro, doing some more uh, specific pieces. Kind of wanted to do like a Spanish missionary and have like an entrance way for that and uh, just other uh, pieces. Maybe I'll make a tower, a broken tower, and add these to it. Uh, you know, just other variations of it. All right, so now uh, to counteract warping, I'm going to cover the bases and the edges uh, with black craft paint. So I usually do the base first, uh, the bottom of it, and then I let that dry before I paint the top. The two will pull on each other and counteract it so these pieces don't warp. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, think that I build them on MDF, and I have. There's some videos where I've done that. Uh, but I just want to show you that you can do it with just scraps uh, with uh, Dollar Store Foam Board. It's not necessary all the time to use MDF. You, you can just use scraps that you have lying around. But you got to make sure you paint both sides. Uh, now, I painted that bottom, let it dry for 24 hours. Then I painted the top and let that dry for 24 hours. So then you get a good, solid, uh, straight piece. So this is after I've done that. So yeah, it, it does take a few days. Uh, and if you went with MDF, it would it'd be much faster. You wouldn't have to do that step. Uh, but I just wanted to use uh, just scraps and stuff left over around uh, in the plunder den here to build these ruins. So they came out real good. Just taking a look at everything, make sure everything's uh, painted up. But I had to go and, and touch up that paint a little bit uh, because it, you know, shrinks craft paint. Uh, and then now I'm moving on to my standard... Uh, colors real brown bark brown pablo and then camel for the stones i do want to uh add all my basic craft paint underlay on here uh, to start building up my layers of colors so pretty well on all my terrain and most things that i build uh including my ships uh, those are the colors i use um i'm not going to show you too much we're gonna we're gonna kind of briefly show the uh start here Mainly because I've done a lot of videos now where I've just told you I've used these colors. Uh, and you can go back and look at the uh, stone painting tutorial video or the stone bridge. Uh, either one, uh, I kind of uh, show you a more uh, of how I do my painting technique for, um, you know, dry brushing and, and getting all these colors put on. Um, so I'm just briefly showing you here. I use that kind of a larger paintbrush uh, and I just... You know, I, I have my piece of paper towel off the camera there. I make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush. Um, and I just kind of touch everything, uh, the entire thing with uh, the real brown. And then I go to the bark brown. Then I go to the pablo. And then the, the very last step, I, I put that camel on the stones. And that's kind of what I'm showing you here. Now, when I put the camel on the stones, I did switch to a smaller dry brush uh, opposed to that bigger brush I have in my hand. All right, so this is after I added all those colors. And they're pretty well dry. Uh, you can see it's got kind of a... Uh, it's, a it's a good stage, but it doesn't look like it's a fully flushed out. You can leave it like this if you wanted to, I suppose. Um, and not go ahead and add uh, the details. Uh, but I like to add, take it a little further and start using some of my miniature paints to add more details. But before that, I think I want to hit that wood first. Um, and I want to hit it with some yellow ochre just to brighten it up. Now, I, I use yellow ochre, but I also mix it in with the real brown. So I do a, like a darker uh, version of the yellow first. And then I, over top of that, I add some just straight up yellow ochre. And I put very little on that dry brush and I really rub it in. And uh, I've, I've shown that in the, uh, the fortification painting tutorial where I, I painted the decks on that. Uh, same technique. Uh, if you want to look at uh, that, because I'm not going to show it in this video. Uh, you can go back to that and refer to that. So there's Desert Yellow, Skeleton uh, Bone, uh, Necrotic Flesh, uh, and Mummy Robe. Uh, this is for my stones. These are standard colors I use. Then I'm going to add a few more uh, washes. So this uh, Skeleton Horde uh, and this uh, Agrax uh, Earth Shader. So and those are just going to be right around the edges and really give it a, you know, a dark weathered look. 
I like to add that skeleton hoard to some of the stones after I've added it. It just looks like dirt and grime. And I put some of them on the on the decks. So you can see this is after I've done all that. It's got a nice uh, rustic look to it now. Uh, after I've added all those different colors. And I think maybe in the future I'll actually do a, maybe a, just a smaller piece where I just do a, a straight up just paint tutorial. So this is the Sterling Mud uh, Effect Paint. I just add a little bit of mud in some of the areas where the boards are twisted. I showed you some white and blue. I plan on doing the framed windows just to add a little bit of color to it. Like it's uh, gives it a bit more aged look. So then I added the hardened leather and grim black speed paints by Army Painter. Uh, just to kind of flush out a little bit around the edges again. Even further darkness with the black and, and some of the wood with that brown. And then I want to add some... Plant Life was just Jungle Green and Commando Green, uh, which I've shown in other videos, just to add a, a you know an implied plant life growing in there. All right, so that's pretty much it for the paint job. Uh, I did want to spend a little bit of time showing you the windows. So really, I put a, just a light amount of that blue on there. Um, and uh, I kind of used a really bright blue just so I can kind of uh, just leave a remnants of it on there. You can see I got it on the edge of the plate there. And I'm just kind of rubbing it mainly on the edges and, uh, and just kind of fading it out from there. You can see I'm just leaving a little bit of the uh, blue on there. It looks like it's just old paint uh, that's still left on, on those uh, framed windows. All right, so this is pretty much all done, the paint job. And I just figured I'd add a little bit of a large plant life to these pieces. Uh, so I went with some uh, Army Painter tufts and some flocking. So we got some mountain tufts, jungle tufts, steppe grass, and that uh, field grass. And I kind of just went and touched some areas around closest to the building and the stones that are out back to kind of com complete the look here. All right, so let's get to the table here and see the final project. Uh, here's some of the roads that we built in the last episode. Uh, just kind of uh, in this particular scenario, I have it in a in a jungle scene, um, but I kind of took some pictures of it uh, with uh, my uh, Blood and Valor miniatures as well, showing that it could be uh, part of a town in Europe or whatever that's been destroyed. So this really could be used for a lot of different things. So just showing you all completed, you can see where I've added those uh, that flocking and grass, just a little bit around the edges and the stones there. It kind of just gives it that little extra uh feel to it that i really really like on my terrain pieces so we're going to take a look around the back side here just kind of one more look at everything uh, i got some of my uh, english freebooters here and some of my blood and plunder miniatures just kind of showing you what it would look like in a jungle scene uh, i i felt that it really worked well with my world war one uh, figures and also uh, these blood and plunder uh, miniatures so uh, this will be a very good versatile piece of terrain all right, uh, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Planet Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Planet Den to get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.